Hi, my name is James D'Souza, and I'm a psychology teacher. I'm Willem Vanderhorst, a uh, brand strategist. I suddenly forgot and, my, my title, sorry. An and, uh, brand strategist. And every episode, we go on tangents discussing big questions about life that Willem has no idea that I'm going to ask him. And somehow he comes up with amazing answers because he's wildly creative in his job as a brand strategist. And this season three, this is season three, episode six, and the theme has been career. This week's question, or this episode's question is, why do you think people change careers? Why do you think people change careers? And yes. you said uh, you said the theme has been, so should we address the fact that we're thinking that we're gonna wrap up the career related questions? Let's unless, address that. Our, unless our audience has like last minute questions that pop up that we haven't addressed in any of our previous episodes. But I think uh, it's one, one way to say, well, send us questions, comments, feedback, uh, mm -hmm. send questions to hello at jamesdesouza.com. So I know it's a very involved process, but you know, um, it's so that I don't see the question in advance because that's the whole purpose of the show. And obviously yep. like, comment, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a star, five-star review. But yeah, we've, we've uh, I don't know if we want to say something else, but given we started this out, on questions from students, we do, we have really answered a lot of career and job related questions, even in our first and second mm -hmm. seasons. Mm -hmm. And we're covering again, like this is gonna be a sixth. And we expected to do 10 episodes in the, in the we season, did. but we're kind of feeling like we're running out of steam on the topic, starting to circle out, circle the same kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add to that. No, I think you covered it. All right, yeah. great. Um, and nothing at all, it's been good. We'll just shift gears to something else and then start the other season uh, on another theme. Um, so why do people change jobs or careers or what? <clears throat> why do people, why, the question is, why do you think people change careers? I think people change careers because, um, so a few things. <clears throat> and again, this is really interesting because I feel it's stuff that we've covered already. Mm -hmm. But not not necessarily in, in a hopefully it's a sufficiently new angle. Hmm. <clears throat> but <clears throat> sorry, I don't, and I have a cold. I cold, so I'm just apologize for expectorating. It's disgusting. Um, the <laughs> we have a mute function. Yes, but it was just anyway. Um, okay, so we uh, are expected to know. So a few different things. There is the option that. Of changing careers that didn't exist before okay. what i mean by that is uh before and even during the industrial revolution and all the way up to maybe the second world war ish um you were born into what you're going to do and spend the rest of your life at more or less it's a good point not necessarily but more or less yeah you know if you're a in the countryside and your parents were tilling the land and taking care of it and were peasants or farmers then you're more like it's the high likelihood that you're just doing the same thing there's no question about it it's mm -hmm. big and if you're mm -hmm. an aristocrat then you're going to be educated and you're expected to take over the family's estates perhaps mm -hmm. depend, and then depending on which order of birth you are there's different expectations if you're a highborn uh, so, you know, if you're at a certain position, you might go into um, uh, religious orders or another, some of the, so you might have a few options if you're a highborn type person. You might have a few options if something happens in your life and you're, you know, you're a farmer, but you have an uncle that is uh, the, the pastor or whatever, something like the religious person or a craft person, in which case maybe you have an opportunity to be trained as one and mm -hmm. you become a smith of some kind blacksmith or baker or something uh but you, you see what i mean there's not much there was not much there was not really an idea of a career there was not really much idea of like shifting and that you could do different things yeah you're kind of you're kind of pointing out the fact how structured society was and you were in your still is really but well yeah but slightly differently but, do, but I, there, I think there's probably more movement between structures there, there, maybe you don't think it, a little bit <clears throat> but i think there's a lot more of the illusion of movement and a cultural belief that there's the movement is possible like the american dream but in reality 
across all the numbers, there's not really that much movement. Okay, you've just <clears throat> smashed my dream. Thank you. But anyway, the that's it's it's a one that you can ex <laughs> we'll explore a little bit. Uh, but yes, there is a lot more than before. Yeah. And yeah. There is a big question to be had, and I'm sorry if it's a depressing one. Well, wait a minute. Is all the movement all that significant? Or is it just some people moving slightly to side to side while the people who are at the top are, and the people who are like in the spheres of power are still pretty much the same? Not the same, same, but, you know, there's new ones. But I know this is a huge tangent, but I don't care. And I think you're right. The, the, the top hasn't changed. I think the bottom has changed a bit. But when I read Thomas Piketty's book, about capitalism yeah i still haven't read that on YouTube. oh my god it's so good it. i it I, I honestly it it altered my it didn't alter my thinking it reinforced it, it gave it articulated a lot of what i couldn't understand and <clears throat> because he looks at the tax records of key countries like the the, the uk france america denmark i think the netherlands and germany as well like historically hundreds of years he looks back and he assembles it all and he makes the point that after the first world war oh I, it was only after the first world war that the middle class really started to grow and got created first world war then okay cool first world war, and then the income tax didn't really exist until after the first world war, which i didn't know yeah. so i think your point about changing careers is I agree with like everyone knew what they did. Everyone maybe had a trade or was going to do what their parents did or whatever. So and there was to play some historical context is interesting. And in in so far as it's it. a pretty recent idea, sorry, I cut you yeah, off. Yeah, it is. It is. It is a relatively recent idea about moving, but the, mm. the idea of, and this does go back to one of our seasonal sources, Yuval Noah Harari about having to alter your career and reinvent yourself. But the years ago, hundreds of years ago, however long ago, you didn't have to. You knew what you were going to do. Yeah. The idea of changing career or even changing your life, I suppose, or your standing in life, your place in life, has only been, is relatively recent. Yeah, very recent in the state of humanity. It's pretty recent. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then where I was going to go next was, okay, well, then we created a, and I say we, I don't know how exactly that came about, but an expectation or a creation that you can you can change that <clears throat> there's mm. upward mobility changes um and that you're going to have an education path leading you to that aspiration mm -hmm. of like to that aspirational mm -hmm. career or to that mm -hmm. career so there's a few different ideas that came into place one uh, so there's also more migration at this point not more because it was already between the states and <clears throat> where I was i don't know whether this was an idea i'm not sure where i'm not sure where it's should, where it fits exactly mm -hmm. but certainly parents have expectations uh, with more access to middle class that their kids are going to be able to do better than they did yeah and usually yeah. that meant yeah. to have a higher education to be trained and we've talked about this type of stuff because you had that experience that my kids are going to be you know they, they won't be working in a factory or something or working with their hands they'll be doctors lawyers or some kind of office job that is better paid and not as grueling yeah. Uh, so there's this this idea and hope that education will lead you there. So after a few generations, with that's created, well, I mean, maybe for, from the first generation, I don't know, but a pressure pretty early on in teenage years. Yep. To lo start lo to conform to the idea of what your parents want. To but also just simply to say there is this thing called this is where you're going called adult life, grown up life, career, job, work. Mm -hmm. And you have to know and figure out what it is that you want. Now, the, the what you want is depends on the family. And like, I think that came even more recently that there's choice mm -hmm. because before that it was like, well, you know, you, you just do well with your studies. And it was also, we've talked about this a bunch of times that there's a, that it, there were, and there still is to a certain extent, a lot of that going on in the minds of people, that there's an expectation that if you follow the path of the studies, you'll have the job and the career that goes with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but my but what I wanted to to draw out, particularly in this case, is this idea that really young from a young age, you're expected to figure out know what career path to to get on to. And this and this is happening earlier and earlier. And I think we've talked about that in earlier uh, earlier episodes. Where I want to get to with this, 
and I'm, I'm, I think I might have said it before, but basically you're really young. You don't really have much experience of life or the world yeah. or anything else. Yeah. And so you go yeah. on a career of what you think is right for you. Mm hmm. Or, or what, what, or you, what, um, what your parents want, or you know, grownups, etc. Parents, grandparents, uncle, whatever the influence that the person, the people that influence you. So you go with what they say you need to do, or should do, or you want to please them. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on, you might realize once you get to know yourself better that what you're doing is not right for you. So then you change careers. Or you went to some, she went into something because that was the right thing to do, or or also that's the opportunity that you had. There's a lot of that going on as well. Mm. There's a lot of, you know, we realize, and this is what I'm talking about. Well, no, I'm, I'm not talking about that much, but my students are dealing with that kind of thing because that's where they're at. They're in, um, uh, what's it called? Further education. So after high school, what do you call that? It's a. Uh, oh, in, it would be higher education. It's higher they're, education. They're like yeah. University students, yeah. right? in higher education towards the end of it and my school is a you know professional communication school so part of the reason uh the students pay for it is to learn trades and that you know the school has a whole big network of uh companies that you can go into and there's internships every year mm -hmm. so you can like start getting professional experience and learn uh learn stuff in class that is directly applicable hopefully to the kinds of jobs you'll have but anyway, my point being, they're starting to look, look for internships and then full-time jobs and longer and longer internships by the end of it. And some of them might know what they want some, but and not get it. You never mm -hmm. know what you're going to get. I mean, those, I, I, did, I didn't mean to do the Forrest Gump thing, but uh, I guess it works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, mean, you mean with internships, you never know what internship you're going to get. You just kind of, is that what you mean? Yeah. So there's multiple yeah. ways in which you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes it turns out to be exactly what you wanted, but either you look for something, you have an idea of what you want, you go and look for it, you don't get it, you get another type of job yeah, or another type of company, or you, you have an idea of what you want, you go and work for a company that is exactly what you thought you wanted, you go there and it doesn't go well, and it doesn't go well, either you realize that you, didn't, you don't like this type of thing and you don't want to do it again, and it yeah. could be a type of role. It could be um, it could be the company, or it could be that it's not about the type of uh, work that you're doing, but it's about the people there and the manager didn't work well at all. Anyway, you get you get just the real life. Like that's the kind of stuff that happens. And then you, there's a lot of different ways you can fall into a job or fall into a career out of your higher education or education altogether. Uh, and there's a so why people change careers, I think a few years later down the line, you realize mm. that this doesn't work for you anymore. Mm. Mm. So you think that you're unhappy. Mm. I mean, it's one of the main driving things that you would change careers, I think, purposely, uh, purposefully, purposely, um, that you're no longer happy with your choice. And what I was going back into with those kind of a long, long walk was to go back to the beginning of like how you get into your first career. Yeah, it's, I really like what you're saying. And there are points that spoke to my experience where this whole idea, you, you don't know what kind of internship you're going to get. So my degree was two years at uni. And then when I, the reason I applied for that course at that university is because they specialized in students doing placement years. Yeah. And, and I knew I wanted to do that. I had the insight when I was about 18, 18, 19, that there was a lot I didn't know about. I don't know how, I remember thinking there's a lot I don't know about. I am actually immature, which requires a certain amount of maturity to realize. So I knew I wanted to do a year working. Problem was I didn't know what in. So I was doing business and psychology at university. What did I want to do as a placement? And, and then you use that word fall in that phrase fall into a career you fall into. And I remember everyone was applying for placement years in like internships and everyone was getting them. And I had a couple of interviews. I didn't get one. And one came up, I applied for it, had an interview and got it. And, but it was, I, I mean, I didn't know if I wanted it or not. It was just, I wanted to do something. I don't know if it was the right career, the right job, the right whatever, exactly like you're saying. 
but it was a start and then it kind of grew from there so it was you don't the, know the start has a lot something. of other factors what do you mean so you start something and then you start making money and then i mean there's a lot yeah. of other factors in your life that play into whether you go into that career or job or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. With to do with your family, your parents, whether yeah. you might have a girlfriend or boyfriend, yeah, a partner. Um, whether you, at some point you're probably getting to a point where you're like, okay, well, maybe I'd like to have my own apartment. Although I know that kids are leaving later and later from the their parents' place, but that really, really depends on your circumstances. If you're li- leaving later from your parents' place, presumably you're in a really nice, cushy middle class or better type environment. Um, mm. So. You know, from the moment you anyway, but from the moment you get your own place and you have to pay rent, mm. then your income gets very important. Mm. And the time ability, the time and ability that you might have to to change careers gets limited. Mm. And most people live paycheck to paycheck, mm. Mm. Uh, regardless of, of how much money you're making. A lot of people spend most of everything they have, even just maybe like a little bit of savings, but not rarely enough particularly if you've moved to a big city to be able to make sure that you have more opportunities for work that means that you're spending a lot more money on rent and you still want to go out because you're young so you're spending all your money on that or at least i did and having extra money to say well i have that much saved aside that i can leave and think about what i want to do next in a in a in an environment mostly where people will tell you you're nuts don't leave if this is a good job yeah and then the years go by fast yeah yeah they do and the because my job my first jobs and my first initial kind of career was in and around marketing my parents did not understand what I did I was I did a job where I built databases for a company I did another job where I was then really deeply getting into analyzing data for marketing campaigns they didn't know what a data planning analyst was or a marketing analyst was And we won't and then, know what the kids tomorrow are doing. It's going to be weird. Exactly. They'll be like, well, I build widgets in the metaverse. I'm like, what? Which, which metaverse? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, it's I... like, it's like when people used to sell and like create and sell stuff in Second Life. There were people who made a living from that. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, course, that makes sense. That. Of course. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Uh, but it is like a market within a market within a like. Well, it's yeah. jobs that jobs that don't exist yet. Yeah. It's the whole adapting to the 21st century and or jobs that uh, and this is another thing that I wanted to mention. So you fall into a job because it's like the opportunities that you have at the particular time. Yeah, <clears throat> it's also a matter of like the conversation you have, what you find out about what you know is out there, because that's just like you can't know everything that's out there. Mm-hmm. And Google, we've talked mm-hmm. about it, specializes in giving you the right answer sh- straight off the bat, not a range of like, what are all the businesses out there and what are they doing? And we don't really have time to explore all of what the businesses out there are doing because it's just too rich. It's it, it's mind boggling how um, how many types of businesses are out there doing things. And I think students have uh, my students have a lot of other work to do, and they have to fit in. All right, who's looking? Uh, which companies are hiring? Is what I mean. Yeah, apparently my yeah, yeah. second year students are struggling at the moment but this is another mm-hmm. matter it's just format and apparently it's a real thing and they're asked to do a three-month internship in their second year studies mm-hmm. uh and it needs to be a paid internship but apparently french companies wow. are really um uh, reluctant to do three-month internships with second year students they'd rather have a fourth or fifth year students to do six months which makes economic sense yeah, it's or, like they're a bit or, older, they're a bit more knowledgeable, and, and like, why would I pay somebody who's like three years younger for three months? And there's a whole, apparently there's a whole concern around the three months, which I, I thought was weird, but. Why does it have to be paid? That's the French, the French, it's legal, it's like the, the way things work in French, past a certain time, and I think it's 20 days, it has okay. to be paid. It's like the, the, the law, you know, you, you, uh-huh. you, can't just, you can't go into work and not be paid, it's illegal. Which from a company's point of view yeah you'd want someone older a bit more knowledgeable like you said who you, who's going to provide some kind of values to the company rather than some young punk who thinks they know everything well i think the fifth year students thinks they know everything too but you know 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But we know everything because we're in our 40s. And, yeah, I think you know, the only thing we, we know wise. in our 40s is that we don't know anything. <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I knew everything. And I was trying to explain to those old, dumb people in companies how they should be doing their strategies and stuff. I, I did I did learn. At, when it was when I was 18 that a boss told me, you, they were like, do you want an insight? I was like, yeah, you're, you're immature. I was like, what? That really shocked me, floored me. I thought I was mature. I thought I was very mature. That's interesting because someone told you that, whereas I don't know why, how I came to that realization. Yeah, I thought that's why. No, somebody had to tell me. I, I did not come to that realization by myself. <laughs> by myself, I thought I was very mature. Oh, no, I, I knew I was immature. I don't know how. I don't know why. But that's. But the, the other thing I wanted to add was as much mm -hmm. as I was doing a job my parents didn't understand, and it's has, like, you hit the nail on the head of like, all the new jobs that are coming out that people just have no idea about the when i said i wanted to change careers to become a teacher suddenly they were like oh our son's a teacher yeah now i teacher. understand that's good i can relate to what my yeah i never and, understood what my dad did i didn't know what my dad did i don't think my mom knew what my dad did just goes in big <laughs> skyscrapers and apparently does things with money of some kind i'm not sure <laughs> and when i went to his office as a kid i was like, i was big office. <laughs> But even growing up, and I only understood at his 70th birthday, and he had an old friend and colleague, and he explained to us what the euro dollar market trading was. And it was a specific subset of currency trading that I had no idea existed in the 80s. Wow. Uh, it was this thing called the euro dollar. And the euro, I can't even remember, I, I would have to go and look on Wikipedia again what exactly it was. It was, I thought he was doing currency trading and he, they were like, no, we weren't. We were doing Euro dollar trading. I was like, what is that? I don't, I don't even understand. <laughs> it was but a specific did, thing that was created uh, uh, back then. And did it, your dad do the sense. same thing through his, like, was that just one career? Most, no, he didn't do the same thing throughout. That was the large chunk of his career. The biggest chunk of his career was in uh, trading. Okay. So he got my... trading offices and he worked in money and um, and but what they were doing back then, which was what you, it was possible because there was a lot of different banks to buy and sell to and from. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Before all the banks were consolidated and before all the trades were done by computers. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't trading stocks. He was trading, um, I don't know, euro dollar assets. I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Whereas, I need to look up what it was. In contrast, my dad, had the same job for over 30 years. Now he changed jobs a bunch of times. And or then, career, sorry. He had the same, my dad had the same career for And 30 then he years. burned out of his career. So he changed careers. And well, he was not working for a while and we lost everything. And we didn't, I mean, we went from having like a lot of cash to not a lot of cash at all uh, as a family and not mm. me particularly. But, um, and then he was just tired for a long time. It's the kind of job that just exhausts you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he was trying to get more and more money. And then he was just basically like over 40 and no longer employable in this line of business. So he did a bunch of different stuff. He tried to start new businesses. And then he, for a while, he was working as a, a limo driver. So his claim, it, yeah. the story to fame on that one is uh, um, he drove, uh, he drove um, Robert De Niro around while he was shooting for Ronin uh, to Wow. Frankenheimer action movie in Paris. Good film. Uh, it was a fun film. And so I have a signed, signed script and a signed photo of uh, Rob, Bob De Niro from that time. Uh, and wow. my father had a lot of cool stories of chatting with Robert De Niro. That's uh, very cool. I didn't know that. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought about it in a while. And then he was uh, working in the par uh, in, on the Persian food market, selling fancy olive oils. Olive, all sorts, olive, olive and nut oils. That was the whole thing of this particular booth. And I worked on the Parisian markets, getting up at, you know, 4 a.m. to go get ready on there. Uh, I worked with him. My little brother worked with him for a while. Mm -hmm. But that was heavy um, manual work for somebody who was getting older. Mm. But, you know, he did a lot of stuff to try and feed his family, basically. Mm -hmm. But we're very different from the money markets. He was just done with it. You, the I, I want to go back to this idea of yeah sorry well, that was a big tangent no it, it relates because it's the idea of exploring how careers 
change move well, that, that was another thing on why do you change careers it's a yeah. good example you burned out yeah. there's the burning yeah. out is a big it's yeah. a big thing and it's, it's a word that's massively used in france a burnout uh oh, okay yeah and it's it's so overused to me that it's difficult to figure out when somebody is actually burned out because a lot of people do hmm. versus somebody who's just a bit tired and like is just using the word as a way to to um to say they're a bit tired but somebody gets fired burns out you had enough because of the, your line of work was just too much one way or another mm -hmm. is one reason why people change careers mm. certainly and, and, and well a bunch of different reasons why people might change careers and then you change careers because something didn't work out as i said you just so that's a whole uh, a whole big thing for people who are your job gets displaced yeah you yep. work at the local factory all your life. You've gone through up, like up the ladders, the rungs of the ladder, and you have experience, so you're well paid. Mm -hmm. You have a pension plan, so you're not going to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the the biggest employer in your area. And then they close shop to go um, displace the jobs in Asia, and you lost your job mm -hmm. and all the pension plan and everything else that goes with it. So then you, I guess, because that's the the rhetoric in the media is you need to retrain and change careers at a point perhaps for a lot of people at a point in life where you've done the same thing for a very long time and you were an expert in your corporation because that's what happens with large businesses in general mm -hmm. uh, large corporations you become an expert in navigating how to do the work at that corporation mm -hmm. more so perhaps than being a specialist in one area uh, it depends but that's um, that, I, that I remember an interview I had with a, a, with a it was for Nissan a uh, big car company and he I, I had I worked with somebody I it also reminds me of a when I used to work for Shell as a client uh in uh London the person so I was working in an agency and interfacing with the marketing managers the mm -hmm. person was the marketing manager and was assistant marketing manager and then or like the deputy and then became the marketing manager mm -hmm. at some point while we were working together uh was somebody who had worked who had entered Shell as a as a trainee intern when she was yeah. 16. Wow. Wow. And she was, a, it was, she was in her middle years of some kind. Exactly. I don't know what, how old she was, but older than us, I think. So she'd been in like 20 odd years. No, no, no. Like 30, close to 30, so I think. Close to 30. Like she was, she'd oh, been there right, 25 right, right. Yeah, so 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Sorry. Yeah. And she fully expected to stay there and have that job. And I don't know, but my point being that at, at that point, so she had gone through a number of the, so she was not a marketing expert she was a expert about how shell operates internally yeah yeah, yeah. because you've been in the now. corporation 25 years yeah how shell operates and how to work within shell but she didn't mm -hmm. really know much about marketing it's a, that that like specifically and large corporations operate like that i've worked with toyota and uh i've worked with a lot of very large corporations and typically they tend to rotate people around and they, when you get into a job, you become a specialist of the inner workings of that corporation, but you're not necessarily a specialist of the work that you're doing with the product or the, because they rotate people as well to try to keep things fresh, which is, it's an, it's a, it, I don't know. It's weird. It's an interesting thing going on, but it's, it's, it's different from uh, actually what I meant, the, what's, how it relates to my example of like working in the local factory area and going yeah. through the wrongs and gaining experience. Yeah, is you've become a specialist, perhaps some people are specialists in this particular field, but a lot of them would be specialists at operating at that factory within that corporation, that environment. Once you leave, it's like, well, I have 15 years experience with that. How do you where do you go with that? And how do you change careers? It's it's, it's a tough call. Yeah, because the, the, the phrase that you reminded me of is the transferable skills. It's easy to get stuck in. I'm really good at this company. I'm really good at these things in this company, yeah. but what value can, what value do, can I provide? Do I really provide? Which goes back to one of the core things of why we always talk about on teaching tangents, which is know yourself, know your strengths, know what you're good at, know the value you provide, keep elevating your value by reading books, whatever it is. And I'm also reminded of the, Yuval Noah Harari quote of cognitive structures will melt. And that's, and the reinvention. I'm also reminded of when, when you've been talking about and exploring this whole idea of changing careers and why people change careers. I'm also reminded about the, 
you're in a career, you realize you don't like it, you want to change, kind of reminds you of one of our other sources of what do you desire of yeah. Alan Watts. If you're not in touch with what, and that's why I changed careers. I got in touch with what I really wanted to do and what I really wanted to provide in the world. And it wasn't in working for a marketing agency. It didn't, that didn't fulfill that desire of what I felt I could bring to the world. Yeah. And that's why I became a teacher. Yeah. And which the, joins back the idea of Ikigai that we've talked about a bunch of times as well. Which I introduced to my form group. So they're 15, 16. And I went through the whole thing. And information is beautiful, has a really great, cool looking infographic about the idea of Ikigai with lots of cool colors and like, and I showed it to them and I got them thinking about it. And did you do the, any exercises or ask them to do any exercises? I, not yet, but I will. I might even just send around the wait, but why post, which is another one of this season's resources yeah. that we're using. And they're, they might be a bit young to get into it, but I think Tim Urban writes in a really accessible way. Yeah, he does. And, and they're not too young to get into time. it because like that's, if you have and you do have the pressure of trying to work out which direction to go in mm. and you might not get it entirely right but doing that kind of work will give you an edge over somebody who hasn't done it huge yes and it, that's like what we keep repeating for this season is spend some time out and it's time flies so fast netflix hours fly so fast or instagram <laughs> or tiktok time you know you're just like oh well but but spending one hour to say, okay, what is it that I want? And like, just with no interruptions, with a piece of paper or, or a Word document, whatever, something, just like turn off your Wi-Fi and spend an hour doing that. That is an enormous amount of effort and that your brain will won't want to do that. It's system two stuff. It doesn't want to do that. Remember system one is all intuitive. System two is all rational and effortful thinking. Your brain wants to go, no, I want TikTok another TikTok, like let's spend three hours on TikTok without realizing we spent three hours on TikTok. It's easier to do that or another 10,000 episodes of the TV show you're binging on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever, than to say, no, I'm going to spend one hour and look at where I'm at and what is it I want. To all the people listening, Willem has dropped a massive truth bomb there. You should listen to what he's saying. It's, it's, uh, or even just listening to us, you can just like press pause and go, okay, well, what am I, what do I want? Or just do it while you're listening to us. Actually, that works too. That's true. You could explore the tangents. We're, I think we're probably a decent background for doing the work that we talk about. I don't know how you can listen to a podcast and do other stuff. I can't do it. Oh, I, I'm so glad you said that. The number of people I talk to who tell me they do listen to stuff in the background while they do something else. And I'm like, I can't do that. I, I particularly if was, I can't, I can't do two thinking things at the same time. The only thing I can do when I'm, I, I can drive to school, drive somewhere and have a podcast on. That's good for me. Yeah. I can clean. My thinking. I can wash the dishes. I can't do Hoover. that. I can't do that. Can't do really? it. You can't nope. wash the dishes and listen to a podcast nope. at the same time. I no. Nope. Wow. Okay. That's okay. No, I can do things that don't take too much of my attention. So I can walk, I can, uh, yeah. I, but, but if I'm working at the same time and thinking about what I'm doing for work, I can't really listen to another podcast. No. I can't pay attention to both. No, I can't. And I don't like work. having background with people talking, but I, I know that you told me they think you're, uh, you know, somebody who likes to watch TV shows. And I, I know people who put TV shows or movies in the background that they've seen before while they're doing work and i'm like i don't know what kind of work you're doing we really not doing the same work i'm doing i i unless it's unless i'm feeling maybe if i'm like copying and pasting like data from one cell to another in, in excel or something like if the work i'm doing is mindless then maybe <laughs> i can listen to something at, at, at the same time maybe i can't i can't that's too funny I you're a whole other level i'm i would if i'm doing the washing up or the hoovering I would much rather have something that I'm thinking about and think about that. A bit like, like he listening says, to podcasts while I'm cooking. A bit like he says in deep work, like pick something that you're going to ruminate on, think about. And occasionally I'll do that on the drive to work. I'll pick some lesson I'm trying to plan or something and just go for it. And, and that's, that's been an interesting discipline for me to do. 
I did three hours of improv class this week. Oh, As wow. in, what I mean by that is two times an hour and a half. The, um, the school I work at has a big internet outage. And actually, it's like not just the school, it's the, mother, the mothership corporation. So all the places where they have schools are all cut out of the internet for weeks. And the 4G wasn't working, so I couldn't hotspot. And oh, they were wow. meant to have an exam, and it wasn't working. So it's my class called Digital Brand Environment. And I'm like, well, I, you need to, it was stuff that you need to go look at an Instagram account of a brand and like observe it and give me, so I was like, okay, forget it. You can't, your phone's not working, <laughs> nothing's working. I was like, all right, great. Close all your laptops. All right, uh, let's talk. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? What's our topic of interest? And I'd look, just listened to a bunch of podcasts. So I had a lot of information. Oh, so I have two things that, so one thing is, and this is- Wait a minute, I'm, I'm, just, just a second. So this yeah. was all, this was a class. Yeah. So I winged the class and two, because it was two groups of an hour and a half. Congratulations, Willem. You have joined teaching. <laughs> I've done you that now before, know. but this is like, where well, this was fully- no, but you now know what it is to be a teacher. to the students to say, okay, I have nothing prepared. Let's just talk about stuff. Do you have questions? Let's go. Okay. You've, you are, you're, you're now a Jedi. Am I now a Jedi? You're now yeah. a Jedi teacher. Really? Yes, if you can do that as a teacher and provide some value and learning with when everything is just not working and you just do that, you've you've reached Jedi. You're not Jedi Master yet, though. Oh, okay. Jedi. But are you surprised though? Because given this is what I do with you every Sunday. No, I'm not surprised, <laughs> but it was always there. But when you're a teacher, there's a certain amount of pressure to conform to a lesson plan, a way things are done, the curriculum, the syllabus, well, all of that. I, I have all, I'm on the opposite end of that spectrum with my school, given I have no lesson plan, complete freedom to do whatever I want. And I'm like, I should have a little bit more structure for myself to, so, to say, okay, well, what am I actually teaching them? Mm. Um, because all I have was the title called Digital Brand Environment. I'm like, all right, what, what formal knowledge fits within this? I have no idea. It's I still don't you. know. That's perfect for you. It is. But yeah. But yeah, no, it was fun. It was, it, yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I winged it. But thank you. I appreciate the call. So I had, a, I had a big sort of compliment at the end of the class. I think we had a few more minutes. I was like, all right, I think we have a few more minutes for the last question. And one student raises their hands. I'm completely self-congratulating myself, I think, a little bit with that question, but it was funny. And this person was like, so, sir, I'm like, yeah. Um, how, how did they put it? It was. Are you translating? From French. No, no, no. It was in English. I teach oh, it in English. English. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to remember the exact way she put it. It was something like, but so you're interested in you're interested in so many. How do you how are you interested in so many different things? How how do you know all this? And how do you get all of this stuff done? <laughs> something like that. And it was it was phrased in such a way that I laughed and I was like, oh, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. But it's funny because I usually think I don't, I'm not doing nowhere near enough and I make myself wrong because I think I should be doing way more than I am. Mm -hmm. um, and the other part is it's difficult and delicate to answer your question because it really feels like what you're asking me is how am I me? Ah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not sure how to answer that. It sounds like you're saying that me is a good thing. So I appreciate, but uh, but then I did also, I did also say, okay, well, seriously, and I talk about this, I, I referred her back to our episodes. Uh, and I said, well, actually, there's also a few things. The fact that I had opportunities with my parents to be going into being trained and getting to know myself and personal development. Yeah. And I had a yeah. job very early on where there was a lot of rigor and discipline to getting things done, which mm -hmm. didn't really fit how I would do things naturally. But uh, it really made it a, a big difference to have that as a foundation for my career. To get trained work, in that, yeah. To get trained in getting things done. In, in, um, and it was not in GTD necessarily, but there were other, like the methodology, but other methodologies to uh, to report back to what I'm doing, to making phone calls, to writing things down, to, like, to, to a whole body of, of methodologies that and, and intense, mm. many hours, long hours work all of that when I was like 22 to 24, which I think really uh, made a positive difference to structure and be able to get a lot of things done, even though I think I don't mm -hmm. get enough done. So anyway, I was crediting that training as well. Um, but it was funny. And it was funny because it's the kind of stuff that you tell me and that we talk about in these calls. 
uh, and and all, what's funny is that it's, I don't feel like that was imposter syndrome, but I told them like, listen, I've just listened to this podcast, this podcast, this journalist, this professor from NYU. All I'm doing is repeating what they said. So I feel like I'm borrowing knowledge. I'm not the smart one. I'm just parroting. Uh, it's not. I don't mean to. I don't mean. I don't think that I'm not smart, but I'm like I'm just giving you the same knowledge that I just learned while I, and I was just you know making coffee and listening to this guy from NYU talk about stuff. I, by the way, r big recommend. Do you know Scott Galloway? Do we talk about Scott Galloway? Name sounds familiar. Yeah, Professor Scott Galloway from NYU Stern. Awesome guy. Like a lot. Big, big. He used to have really big, successful businesses. Marketing he expert. He teaches oh, marketing. Okay. Uh, okay. And stock market expert, tech and business. Uh, and uh, he used to have videos regularly. And I, Anyway, I dropped off and didn't realize that since last year, so it's been a year and a half or so, or maybe even more, he mm -hmm. had a podcast with Kara Swisher, who's a tech journalist and super interesting person as well, uh, called Pivot. And they do it twice a week. And it's like the roundup and they have guests roundup of like the big tech predictions of everything going on in brands and business and marketing uh, in the Silicon Valley, but not only like they talk about everything. And I just listened to an episode with Jonathan Haidt, who's a, uh, he wrote The Coddling of the American Mind. And he's a big psycho, he's also a teacher at NYU, uh, mm -hmm. psychology expert and foremost expert on a lot of the research done on the social, psychological effects and emotional effects of social media. He worked directly Ooh. with Facebook and with others, and he's published a bunch of stuff. Ooh. So a lot of the, so I was talking about all that, uh, and it's super interesting. All that is extremely interesting. Uh, and I highly recommend the Pivot podcast. Now I'm like, this is my new brain food. I'm like, wow, how did I not know about this podcast before? Now, all of, oh, I didn't know about it either. All of this has been the biggest tangent of the season. Yes, from the question, right. you do realize we got super, we both got super excited and we both went on a massive tangent. Yes. Now, it's then, of course, my job to bring it's now the become, question. It's now become a rabbit hole. It's not no it, longer. It's, it's, it's not a tangent. It's a rabbit hole. Oh, okay. So there's grades of how far we Apparently got the question. Apparently, there are. It's the rabbit hole. Okay. Did we cover all? The, I don't think we covered all the reasons of why people change careers, but I think we covered, and it was purposeful because there's a lot of other things that we talk about, but we covered the main. Wait. What? Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I did. I want to oh, I want to bring the rabbit hole back to a tangent, back to the question. Okay. So everything Venom just said, Everything we just said about is a, I think, and I make this assertion, a demonstration of what happens when you read a lot and you think a lot is that you're able to explore. And, and this is like, I think Willem and I are both people who like to read and think a lot quite broadly. But at the same time, within something where an area we're interested in might be people, it might be wanting to contribute to young people. It might be like, that's why we started teaching tangents to, give something to younger people who are interested in exploring a question. Also, that's how, just, that's how we enjoy chatting with each other. That's how it started. And another, we're both, yeah, with another, with one another and we're both protagonists. So that oh, whole, <laughs> that whole tangent that became a rabbit hole is an example of what happens when you start thinking and reading about stuff. You can have interesting conversations that will lead you to explore and discover what you're interested in that and could because not people might not only change careers because they're bored or frustrated or think they're in the wrong job or their whole thing gets lost it might be the flip of side of it which is they're super interested in something and they want to turn it into a, a job or a career yes absolutely and, that's a good point we were missing that one and i think that the having quality conversations maybe even more so than reading books having quality conversations with the people around you is can be an inspiration to want to change a career and it uh, but within that there's also the comparison so i know villain you talk about and think about that you're not doing enough and you read all these amazing people and they're doing amazing things and two podcasts a week and oh my god and you should be doing that but and i have the same thing i should be doing this should be doing that blah blah blah, blah. that can be another reason why people change careers we're like we get to our mid-20s and like, what have I done? I, this was what it was like for me. Like, what have I done with my life? I should be doing this. Everyone else is doing that. Oh my God, they didn't. Like, there's a bit of that comparison that drove me forward. And I think drives young people forward to want to better themselves and to think that they should. And then social media accelerates all of that. So it's, 
be prepared for cognitive structure melting times and being willing to adapt and reinvent yourself in the pursuit of what do I desire? Hopefully. Yeah. And all the time asking yourself, wait, but why? <laughs> A good one is who, who, all right, so if you do figure out what you want, and this is goes, does go back to the wait, but why post, who wants that? Ah, so who? It does go back to the wait, but why? Because like part of the exercises in the wait, but why post of how to pick the right career is that there's a lot of drives that are at play. And some of the drives are, you know, what your parents want or what you want to, because you want to be admired. Uh-huh. Uh, which, which is why not people a bad change thing. careers. Looking at, start like, who, careers. Yeah. That's what I mean by who wants it. It's like, oh, well, actually that's, my parents want that. Or who wants that is like, oh, that part of me that really wants to be admired by this person that I have a crush on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Or, it could or, be. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could be. Uh, so anyway, so if you get to that level of identifying those things, is, it can be very interesting. Um, but yeah. But people change careers. So we've covered and, so far. And you, so a lot of, a lot of young people, and it was funny because it's, uh, there was the, in the podcast I was just referring to, and I've had similar experiences because I had all my tutoring with my master students this week. This is the Pivot uh, podcast, right? Yeah, the Pivot podcast. And the one of the professors is bantering at some point. Well, the professor, Scott Galloway, is bantering about, about his office hours and like hating the kind of stupid hypothetical questions sometimes students come to him with. For, with. And, and he's like, so the, the example there was well, the student shows up and says, well, I'm not really sure what I want to do. Like, can you help me? He's like, what are you, what's going on? I, I'm not sure if I should take a job at uh, Facebook or at Amazon. He's like, do you have offers at both? No, but I'm really just kind of go away. Why are you asking me these questions? It's, use, it's useless. <laughs> just it's hypothetical. Stop worrying about this stuff. So as a student, and I had a lot of students with similar stuff, like, should I, is this going to be the right thing for my research? I'm like, I don't know. Have you read it? No. Well, how am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> is this going to be the right thing for, and another student was asking advice about their internships a few weeks ago. Okay, how many internships applications? So like, I'm not, if I, I don't know if I should take this internship or not. I would need an exception from the school. It's like, does it fit with what the school wants? No. What happened in the interview is like, well, that's kind of red flag. It's like, this is not what the interview, the internship you're supposed to have. Mm. Uh, so you might get your exception by the school, but it's an exception. So you don't expect it necessarily. I was like, well, wait a minute. How many? She's like, but this is the internship of my life. It's a big opportunity. I was like, yeah, I understand. It's a big opportunity, big agency. Mm. But how many applications have you sent? Three. I'm like three and you have one really good result. It's not, so I was like, you just need to send more applications. Rather than like, we're going around in circles with this conversation about what like stresses and stuff imagined you have going on in your head, but really what, what needs you to happen is done? you need to send applications. <laughs> yeah. Similar. And that's, I really connected with that thought of, because I've had those similar conversations. Like, I don't know if I should take this or that job, go for that company. Do you have offers? No. Well, just what? That's irrelevant. We're yeah, having an I, irrelevant I, conversation with what's going I, on in your head. Yeah, so I anyway, do have similar conversations having, with people. Of course, everybody does. Having a strong, uh, I've heard that called having a strong relationship with what's going on in reality. Yeah. Rather than entertaining yep. fears and stuff with the hypothetical. Yep. And we do that. We worry about, oh, is this the right path? And where I wanted to get to, is regardless and it matches back with the question and also with of why we change careers and also what you're saying about uh, worried about what others are doing which we do we have that uh, or at least i do not everybody does but anyway you can only choose one path at a time there's always the path not taken is there and it's it's you, you can't do everything so you have to make choices you might as well and so figuring mm -hmm. out what choice is going to be right for you Mm. is is it something that you constantly learn as as you learn more about yourself but also as you develop because we're not the same people we were when we were 18 i mean we mm. generally mm. are but we're also not we're made and up if of you all don't, of our experiences if you don't choose someone else is going to do the choosing for you or something else something is going to do yeah, the choosing for, sure. for you yeah. which I, I yeah when i was 25 i didn't want that i knew that 
I didn't want to be dictated to by, I mean, the first rebellion was like with my parents and my grandparents. And then it was like, uh, what do I really want? So it's, I wasn't going to, I didn't want to let circumstances choose what I wanted or what I wanted to do. Yeah. But that only really came about from doing a lot of work on myself and having really good mentors and being willing to listen to them, being willing to shut up and listen made a big difference to me because I'm, I'm paid to talk all day in my job. So I think that people change careers for, it can be forced on them. It can be a choice. It can be that they're bored. It can be that they're angry, frustrated, upset, who knows, but the, certainly for me, it was, it was a drive to do something bigger. I think that's a good place to end it. Is it, is it our conversation already? for today. Is it time already? Well, we this usually end it when, when we're done. We're, we're kind of, this has been close to an hour, hasn't it? Has it really? It doesn't feel like it. Wow. I mean, I think. It's past, this... past the hour already. Wow. We started after the hour, but. But this is, okay, this is, for me, this has been a really interesting episode. Yeah, and, and nice I mean, if there's more to add, well, let's go. But I, I kind of feel like that was a good place to end. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. No, I think it is a good place to end. It's just I, I feel time has flown on this conversation, which is, which is great. Good. So yeah, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, send us questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to mm -hmm. announce the new season, I think, or the new theme of the new season soon-ish. Um, if you're watching to this point, not many people do, to be honest. <laughs> um can send us a comment tell us you liked it send us questions if you watch this much tell us and you'll guess you've enjoyed yeah. it we do get some good feedback but we should you know anyway all right cool it's good talking to you i'll thank see you, you soon thank you